Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the new Marvel Legends Joe Fix-It Hulk. This is one of the, what was it, like Comic-Con something or other? Walmart exclusives. I don't know if they were easy to get or not. I mean, I didn't have any trouble, so I'm assuming everybody got them fairly easily. But uh, either way, this is basically just a repaint with a couple of new heads and accessories. So I don't know how you guys feel about it. Let me know in the comment section below. Are you okay with them? making a vastly improved reissue figure an exclusive that seems kind of irksome to me but if it was easy to get then then maybe not i don't know let me know what you think okay so let's go ahead and get this guy off the stand and take a closer look i know you guys are looking at my package so we'll go ahead and look at it really quickly we do have the front artwork which is especially dark uh, i don't know maybe they could have lightened up the figure a little bit something maybe would have made it look better but i don't think you're going to see this on the store shelves anywhere so it doesn't really matter too much unless you're an inbox collector Side of the package is okay, the back is okay, it kind of demonstrates how holding the gun isn't really a strong suit for this guy. And then we have another standard pose here, and that's because this guy doesn't really pose too much, so take it for what it's worth, uh, I don't know, that box isn't exactly great, and let's see if the figure does any better. And this guy stands roughly, we'll just call it 8 and 3 eighths to the top of the head, that's going to be roughly... 21 centimeters, not counting a little bit of hat floof at the top. So there's Darwin. He's a lot bigger than a standard Marvel Legends figure, but he is just a reissue of that Build-A-Figure we got not that long ago. Uh, notable differences. We'll start with the aesthetic. Uh, he's a little bit less glossy. The other one was pretty shiny in places. This guy still is. His arms and legs are pretty shiny compared to his uh, suit coat here. It's not as bad as before, but it's still pretty darn shiny. Now the saving grace on this guy is this time they added the stripes, which do help. Uh, they help a little bit, but as you can see where he's shiny, you can hardly see the stripes. And they're not done especially well. If you look at that arm, you can see that one stripe is all stretched out. This one right in the middle here stretched out and kind of fat looking so not a big deal but it is worth noting we do still have the painted um sleeves and undershirt that's a separate thing and then we have the pocket square so it doesn't look terrible at first glance but he is still very very shiny otherwise it's a pretty good sculpt good looking figure i would say i do believe this head is new not just the unhatted head but we'll look at it real quick uh it's a decent sculpt i think the eyes are a little bit too far apart like yes hulk is hulk but those eyes are way out there i think the thing is generally speaking for human anatomy the end of your mouth should line up with your pupil give or take and so so if you go straight up from either side of the mouth it should line up with your pupil hulk has a big mouth because he's hulk i don't think you want to squish his eyes out that far to line it up because that doesn't usually look right this looks weird to me a little bit but the detail sculpting and paintwork is okay so i guess i guess that's fine so we'll go ahead and say the aesthetic on this guy is gonna get uh it's still only gonna get a seven it's way too shiny it looks weird the stripes are nice but that's not enough to make up for how shiny he is. It's pretty strange looking. Now, as far as accessories go, you do have the hatted head and then the unhatted head. And so those are pretty nice. Same issue with the eyes being really wide on the unhatted head, but otherwise a good sculpt and nice paint job. So that's good. You get the two open hands on him in the package. Then you get two fist hands. That gives you a little bit of variety. And one of the open hands is a trigger finger hand to hold his Thompson submachine gun with the... Uh, uh, drum rather than the magazine so that's pretty cool the drum is removable and the gun is painted a little bit and he can hold it really well in one hand but to do a two-hand pose you're definitely not getting anything practical out of that so it's a little bit unfortunate the gun is also ridiculously large so it's not like he's using a real life human gun which wouldn't make any sense because his giant hulk fingers wouldn't fit so i don't know if he had this gun custom made <laughs> you know it's kind of weird if you think about it but whatever he's got his gun and some extra accessories so i'll go seven out of ten for accessories for articulation it's going to be basically the same as before i don't remember it being particularly good so let's let's take a look the head is on a double ball peg with looks like it'll be decent enough range but i'm guessing he doesn't actually have much practical range yeah you're not <laughs> you're not doing much of anything with this guy other than rotating it a little bit and doing just a little bit of adjustment there's not much happening there for the shoulders, they don't go up even close to horizontal. That's just better than like 45, so that's pretty pretty lame. Full rotation, that's okay. Bicep swivel is down here at the elbow. You can see clearly they didn't continue the lines. That's unfortunate. The swivel is 
hampered by the sculpt and you don't even get 90 degrees. It's close, but you don't quite get 90 degrees out of that elbow either. So far, very limited range. Wrists have a swivel and a hinge. Though they are seated pretty far into the sleeve, which is fine sculpt wise, but you do get limited range as a result. For the torso, I don't think there's anything going on in there other than a waist twist. If there is, it's completely stuck on mine. And there's like some flex maybe, but nothing other than a waist twist and that's pretty darn tight. They didn't even bother painting the buttons. It's so lazy. All right, for the hips, you can get them out. Oh, okay, it's still a Build-A-Figure that falls apart way too easily. Okay. Man, I just love Hasbro products these days. Not even 45 degrees, so pretty limited. Of course, he's Hulk, so you don't really need to do the splits too much, but does limit posability if you want to do anything creative with a figure, which, hey, they are action figures after all. Legs barely go very far forward at all, and they don't really go back too far, and every time I move it, I feel like the leg's gonna rip off. Thigh swivel does swivel, though, obviously. Knees get less than 90. Paint is not continued, because that would just be too, too much to ask. That's, let me, I have to do this. Where's the thing I wanna compare against? I have to, because look at this paint job. All right, you see that paint job? And sculpt. Both the top and the bottom of the knee have the sculpt and paint continued throughout. You have that Predator mesh and skin paint job all the way inside the joint. It's not perfect, there are spots where they didn't do it, but mostly it's there. And then if you look at this guy with his super detailed sculpt and paint job, that would have been even easier to continue. They just said, nah, nah, not happening. So yeah, that's pretty lazy. Very crappy articulation, and they didn't even add anything in there to make it look good. So you get very limited range on the foot. All around terrible articulation. Yeah, so this guy still can't pose for crap. Articulation gets a two out of 10, and the aesthetic is still not very good. The stripes do help. That's good, but he's still shiny. He's still ridiculously shiny. Halfway. Not shiny, 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 shiny. Looks pretty goofy. I'm not thrilled with the head sculpts. His eyes are so far apart. It just throws off the look a lot. He looks like some kind of creature rather than Hulk. Maybe Joe Fixit. I'm not super familiar with Joe Fixit comics. Maybe his eyes are really wide in the comics, but I don't think so. Hold on. Didn't they give us some reference? Let's see. Yep, look, look what I was saying. Look where his mouth ends and his eyes are not in line. His eyes are much closer in because the giant Ron Perlman mouth doesn't mean the eyes have to push all the way out. It makes him look like some kind of weird alien, which is what this is. So I am thoroughly disappointed with this reissue. The stripes are great. The additional accessories and hands and stuff, that's all great, but everything else is still as lackluster as ever. So I'm gonna give this guy an overall rating of five out of 10. It just doesn't look good enough. Uh, frankly, if you really like the stripes, it's still better than the first one. Like, definitely better than the first one, but if you already have the first one and don't really care that much about Joe Fix-It, I don't think you're really missing out too much. So, there it is. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down, and if you haven't subscribed, you should. I have new videos almost every single day, and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that, and in the meantime, keep collecting.